The Exmark line of turf management products is designed to provide safe, productive, and dependable performance when used properly. However, all power equipment can be dangerous when not used properly. You must operate your turf management machine with great attention to safety to protect yourself and those around your worksite. In order to ensure many years of labor-saving service, Exmark asks that everyone who operates turf management products please view this training material in its entirety. And then thoroughly read and understand the operational, safety, and maintenance instructions outlined in the product's operator's manual. Please note that Xmark may make product modifications from time to time, and your model may vary somewhat from the product shown. You can find a copy of the operator's manual and other safety information online at xmark.com. Take a minute to familiarize yourself with the safety and operational decals on the machine as well. They are critical to the safe operation of your aerator. Let's start by reviewing the operator controls. In operating the stand-on aerator, separate levers on each side of the console control the speed and direction of travel of the respective drive wheel and aerator shaft. Steering is controlled by varying the position of the two steering levers relative to each other. The reference bar, located ahead of the levers, is used to assist the operator in steering and maneuvering. Pushing the motion control levers forward from the center neutral position causes the aerator to move in a forward direction. Pulling the motion control levers rearward from the neutral position will cause the aerator to travel in reverse. Independently moving each motion control lever from the center neutral position will cause the aerator to turn in the direction corresponding to which motion control lever is moved. When released, the levers return to the neutral position and the unit stops. Please note that the tines will begin to rotate when the motion control levers are moved from the neutral position. The tine ground engagement foot switch is located on the operator platform. To lower the tines into the ground, stand on the tine ground engagement switch. To raise the tines, remove your foot from the switch. Keep hands and feet away from the tines. Make sure the tine area is clear from any obstructions before lowering it. The tine down pressure control is located on the left side of the control console. Rotate the control counterclockwise to decrease the pressure and decrease the length of the aeration plug. Rotate clockwise to increase pressure and increase the length of the aeration plug. The parking brake knob is located on the right side of the ignition switch on the control console. The brake knob engages a parking brake in the transmissions. To engage the brake, pull the knob out and slide rearward. To release, push the knob forward into the detent. The parking brake should always be set when the aerator is on the transport trailer or any time you park or leave the machine. The red lever on the console is the throttle control used to control the engine speed. Moving the throttle lever forward will increase engine speed. The detent is full throttle. Moving the throttle lever to the rear will decrease the engine speed. Other features of the aerator control panel include the ignition key switch, located here at the bottom right of the control panel. It is used to start and stop the engine. The choke control, located in the center of the control panel, is used to start a cold engine. The hour meter, located just above the ignition switch, displays the number of hours the engine has been running. And the time down pressure gauge, located at the center bottom of the control panel. 
This indicates the tying down pressure applied when aerating. Before you start the aerator, always follow these pre-start procedures. Be sure to engage the parking brake and remove the key before performing the pre-start procedures. Remove the dipstick to make sure the engine oil is at the correct level. If you need to add more oil, use only the oil recommended in your operator's manual. Also, make sure all hydraulic fluid hoses and lines are in good condition and all hydraulic connections are tight. Use cardboard or paper, not your hands, to look for hydraulic leaks. Keep body and hands away from pinhole leaks or nozzles that eject high pressure hydraulic fluid. Hydraulic fluid escaping under pressure can penetrate skin and cause serious injury and must be surgically removed within a few hours. Remove the air filter cover and visually inspect the air filter. Replace the filter if required. Inspect for any loose or damaged parts as well as for any missing, loose or damaged safety shields. Also, be sure to check the safety interlock system and replace any damaged switches as needed. The engine should not start unless the parking brake is engaged. Do not operate the machine without guards, shields, and safety devices in place and working properly. Contact with rotating parts can cause severe lacerations or amputation. Inspect the machine for debris or materials that may interfere with machine operation. Debris such as leaves, grass, brush, etc. can catch fire and must be removed from the engine and muffler area. Inspect the machine's major grease points to ensure the machine is properly lubricated prior to the operation. Refer to the operator's manual for specific locations. Inspect the tine drive for wear and debris. Replace worn tines if they show significant wear prior to operation. Caution, tines can become sharp through normal operation. Also, check the chains to ensure their tension properly. While operating the aerator, your safety and the safety of those around you is entirely in your hands. Please have anyone who operates this machine watch this video and read the operator's manual that comes with it. Let's begin with clothing. It's recommended that operators always wear protective eyewear, hearing protection, close-fitting clothes, long pants, and substantial footwear. A hard hat may be necessary at some job site locations. However, every situation is unique, so always consult your project supervisor for additional precautions prior to operation. Before you begin, inspect the area where the equipment is going to be used and remove all rocks, toys, sticks, wires, and other foreign objects. Flag or mark underground obstacles such as sprinklers, water shutoffs, and wires. In addition, plan your aeration path before you begin. To start the aerator, the operator should first open the fuel shutoff valve. Next, make sure the motion control levers are in neutral and the parking brake is engaged. The stand-on aerator has an electric key start. When the machine is cold, position the throttle midway between the slow and fast position. Move the choke lever forward and turn the ignition key. As the engine warms, slowly return the choke to the off position. When operating the aerator, you should have both feet on the operator platform and both hands on the controls. 
removing your hands from the controls immediately stops the machine. The aerator can spin rapidly by positioning one lever too much ahead of the other. The operator may lose control of the machine, which may cause damage to the machine or injury. Use caution and slow the machine down before making sharp turns. Take time to familiarize yourself with the controls of the aerator. Practice the various moves on flat ground, well away from people or traffic. Practice at slower speeds until you can operate it smoothly and confidently. Operate the controls with an even motion. Never jerk on the controls. Keep both rear tires on the ground at all times. Always remember to keep your hands and feet away from all moving parts and pinch areas. The aerator is a one-person machine. Never let anyone, adults, children, or animals near the machine while it's in operation. If they do get too close, immediately shut down the machine and instruct them to stay away and wait for the area to clear. Never maneuver on unstable ground or slopes over 15 degrees. This could make the unit unsteady and possibly cause it to tip over. Please refer to the operator's manual for clarification. Operating on steep slopes or wet grass can cause sliding and loss of control. When aerating on slopes, be sure to reduce tine down pressure to prevent the drive tires and front tires from rising off of the ground. This will help provide stability to the machine. Caution when operating around landscaping, retaining walls, and other structures. Wheels dropping over edges, ditches, steep banks, or water may cause rollovers, which may result in serious injury or death. Always keep a sharp lookout for ditches, holes, and deep ruts while operating the aerator as rough terrain could overturn the machine. And always be aware of traffic. Always park the aerator on level ground, shut the engine off, engage the parking brake, and remove the key before leaving the machine. Be sure to allow the machine to cool before refueling or storing and avoid contact with the muffler. Use extreme caution when loading the machine on a ramp or trailer. Use only a single full width ramp and be sure the slope is less than 15 degrees. Do not use individual ramps for each side of the unit. Avoid sudden acceleration when driving the unit up or down ramps. Securely fasten the machine to a heavy-duty trailer with straps, chains, cables, or ropes. Turn off the engine, engage the parking brake, and remove the key and spark plug wire before performing any maintenance or service work on the machine. This will prevent someone from accidentally starting the machine while you're working on it. Raising the aerator for service or maintenance relying solely on mechanical or hydraulic jacks could be dangerous. Be sure you use adequate jack stands or equivalent to ensure proper support and prevent injury or death. Follow the recommended maintenance, service, cleaning, and storage instructions as outlined in the operator's manual. Removing standard original equipment parts and accessories may alter the warranty, traction, and safety of the machine. Replace all parts, including but not limited to, tires, belts, tines, and fuel system components with original Xmark parts. This training material does not cover all potentially hazardous situations. Be sure all users follow Xmark's operational, safety, and maintenance guidelines. Remember, the most common causes of accidents are excessive speeds, sudden turns, uneven terrain, and not stopping the engine. Always use common sense and the utmost care when operating Xmark equipment 
and you'll enjoy many years of efficient and reliable service. Together, safety is priority. You can find a copy of the Operator's Manual and other safety information online at exmark.com.